is uh, uh, the general need for you to move from a more decentralized and localized model to a more centralized model, okay? Or at least over the long term, okay? So the question we are faced with is, how are we going to make that change? Okay, it's not whether you have to, to do it in the long run, that has to happen, but how you are going to do it with this? Now here's one con key consideration, that is new organizational structures are associated with new position that require new responsibility to be fulfilled. The problem you face is that your, the key people who you have developed under the old structure may not have these capabilities that are required to carry out this responsibility, right? So you cannot just try to like complete all the changes in one shot, okay, within a short period of time. You simply do not have people to carry out that new organizational structure, okay? So instead of doing that, you have to prepare your people for the new responsibility associated with the new organizational structure. And how can you do that? What we can do is something like we saw in the first case. Right, instead of like go, going from the, the rapid decentralization to the complete centralization, we divide the changes into stages, right? In the process, we develop and prepare people. Okay, now for example, instead of all of, instead of moving, uh, uh, like concentrating all the resources to the center and rely on authority, of the major measure for coordination across different countries in Europe, probably you can instead starting with enhancing the community organization first, right? Before you shift the power over there, right? Get people here interact more, get them involved in cross-country activities more for a certain period of time. And then you migrate this organizational units function to the central headquarters, and then you can move people over there. Right? That probably will be an easier and more feasible solution. Of course, you have to think about the time that will require as well as the pace of organized environmental changes. If the environment to be changed too fast, then you have no choice but take the risk. But if the environment is just moving slowly to a convergence, there is probably not a strong reason for you to like, take Rush, rush things. You know, probably not necessary. Okay, so that's what we see, uh, at least in this case. Okay, is that clear? You, you get what I'm saying? But basically, people are not prepared. You cannot just you know, push them to accept the new structure all of a sudden. You don't have people to fill up the, the proper people to fill up the key position. So, how can you expect this to work? You need to prepare them, right, by establishing like different transitional stages. Okay, and then the new structure will work. Uh, at least more. Okay, talking about rushing, we have an apathy scenario where they really take things very slow, which is the case of much longer. Okay? Okay, let's start with Machu Sita's whole structure, right? Now, in this particular case, um, I want to do two things, there's two major purposes. The first purpose is more general. I try to introduce to you a way to analyze organizational structure, okay? The second is, of course, the interesting contrast between the Machu Sita and Peru. Okay, now, uh, how do I start? I want to, to have time to revise my slide deck. I want to start to change, but I will revise them. Oh, by the way, you have access to the course name already, so you will be able to see the slides on the already. Okay, so when we try to model an organization, okay, we have to identify the key participants, okay, like the, who are the key personnel and what are the crucial organizational units. So if you remember, for example, in the previous case, we have like European headquarters. <coughs> the Tokyo headquarter and business division under the, the, the Tokyo headquarter. Why the country manager or country management, the CME, as well as the, 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 like the regional sales side of it. Okay, so these are the key units or the key people involved, the key people in the previous picture. Right, the CEO, the European CEO, 
who has an idea about, you know, we have to change organizational structure dramatically, but he decided to hire a gun to do that, and this thing doesn't work, it's, uh, you know, it's his position. But anyway, the key people are involved, the Japanese guy, right, and, so, and the, the guy who are behind the new structure. So these are the key people, okay? And then you have to think about the key activities that are supposed to be performed by these key people, right? So in the previous case, for example, we have what? The marketing and sales activities, which are the major consideration, right? Of course, the, the, the production and so on, those are also relevant, but the case does not talk that very much about it. But basically, you have to understand what are the key activities that are relevant to your analysis or scenario, okay? The third will be the relationship, okay? So you need them, people are connected in one sense, okay? So the interpersonal or interunion connection you have to specify, okay? How are the tasks being connected with one another, okay? And then how are the people con are connected to the task? So who is responsible for what, okay? So basically, at the end, you have something, in actually, this is a computer simulation model. We can do this in a very scientific way for a smaller project not for complicated multinational organization. We are not there yet, but we can model small, small project teams. Like these are the peoples, the people who are involved. As you can see, these are the organizational charts, two, two teams, and, and uh, so, so these are the, and, and then these are the tasks that are supposed to be performed. And they are related to one another in certain ways, right? And who is responsible for what and how people are connected with one another, right? Why do we want to do this? Because at the end of the day, we try to figure out if I change, for example, the test design, if I change the organizational structure, right? If I link, add additional link to people, what is going to change in terms of, for example, you can see the, 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 the test completion schedule, right? Well, the bad law, the quality, uh, people, each individual agent are associated with limited resources and capability. So when you give them more tests, and they're going to be slower in completing each individual one, and they may be waiting for the input from the other before they can complete those things. So things like this. So, so what we try to do is that if we alter the organizational design as well as test design, how it's going to affect the overall performance, okay? So, but computer simulation only help at this stage for analyzing a small project, for a new product development project. So if you try to understand, for example, how certain, how sufficient, how if you adjust certain scope of mechanism structure, how thing will change. I mean, we are not there yet. It's way too complicated. Okay. Now having said that, at least conceptually, that's how we can analyze a particular organization structure. Okay. Now let's apply this to Matsushita. Okay. This is a new structure. Now, based on the information provided in the case, here, these are the key organizational units, okay? You have a global headquarter, right? And then the Matsushita Electric Trading Corporation, which was incorporated as a legally independent corporation, okay? And then you have a central research lab, okay? The product division, which is typical in the Japanese multinational organization, multinational multi-product organization, and overseas company. Okay, finally, given the scale of activity, given the, the, the scale of analysis being presented in this case, we have this activity to come consider, right? These are just vertical value chain activities, going from research, product development, manufacturing, and marketing and sales, right? And then different units are connected to one another in certain way, and different units are connected to different tests in a certain way, and these tests are, con the connection between tests in this case is very straightforward, basically going from upstream to downstream. Okay, so using the information provided in the case, we can draw a figure like this for Matsushita's old structure. Okay, now, so let's try to reflect on what you have learned from the case about Matsushita's old structure with reference to this kind of vertical explanation. What are the salient characteristics of Matsushita's old structure? How, how does this work? <coughs> this 
this just help you to organize the information? Positional. Uh, okay. <laughs> right, different product divisions. Yeah. Okay. And anything else? In an ideal world, I should not just present you the picture. I should ask you to reflect on what you have read in the case and try to produce the, 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 the figure together. But the reality and the real experience I had before is that that requires a very careful reading of the case. And you have to know a lot about what this company is like for you to pick up a figure like this. But I mean, it's not really feasible. So I didn't present it to you anyway. But Yes. Um, each division can the is responsible at certain steps of the product okay. from a, from a research to implementation to customer. Right. So they are responsible at each step, but not all of them at the same time. Mm -hmm. So they need to coordinate as well. What do you mean by not all of them at the same time? So for I mean, uh, for example, at the research. Right. Overseas companies are not participating. Right. Okay. At product development, the other divisions, and, and so on. So that mm -hmm. at every step, it's different divisions that are involved. Okay, okay. So for the, uh, for the research and product development, okay, for the product development, product division coordinate with cent the central research hub to, to, to for the product development. Okay, and for the manufacturing, the manufacturing function are under the direct control of product divisions in the in the in the Tokyo. Okay, and they also handle marketing and sales from Japan worldwide. Okay, now the overseas company have a say when it comes to product development, manufacturing, and marketing and sales. So this this overseas company where they do have this thing, they might have it by foreign. Okay, but this figure also tells you that the major power resides in this product division manager who are in Southeast Asia at least at least in Tokyo. Okay? So they have a say. But the final decision are made by product division manager. So just overseas companies they have an understanding of the market. Right. Therefore they can make the requests for right. consortium and product development or right. research manager. Right. But the product division will be the one to Right, right. The agenda are set here right. in Japan. Not the overseas company have a say. Okay? So that's why you have dash line here. That's probably not the Anything else? Yes, please. Just more version from the part, but from Texas is written that uh, a treasury group became like a bank. Mm -hmm. And this bank comes to each lab or division or each company right, right. for money. Right, and right. Did you have like two legally independent entities here in Japan? So both of them are in Japan. And these were also in Japan. The only thing that are overseas is this unit. So all these four units were basically Japanese units. And these but trading companies are more of the kind of a Japanese kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really apply to overseas mm -hmm. regions. I've okay. not seen those kind of companies. Okay. The more traditional model would be like resellers and wholesalers, mm -hmm. distributors, okay. rather than trading companies. Okay. So it could be because of that reason that trading company was established that way, but not operating overseas. Okay. In fact, the trading company is responsible for overseas sales of you know, the Japan back at that time. Right, so it's not for the trading in Japan, but 
this company was established for trading outside of Japan. Yes, please. I'm not sure why Google has its software and trading companies separate. Mm -hmm. But what I think is that there will be different products within um, uh, within the company. Okay. And which of these company cannot uh, direct the overseas company directly. So mm -hmm. we need uh, a central company at, in the Tokyo, okay. which can direct all other uh, overseas companies right. based on the uh, understandings of the product division. Okay. Which of the product division. Okay. Because which of these product divisions cannot be direct to give the instructions to the overseas company directly. I think that we need some central uh, company in Tokyo to uh, tackle all these overseas companies. Okay. So this is reflected on the line here. Yeah. The, the trading company is supposed to oversee uh, the overseas companies. Yeah. Uh, when it's come to uh, overseas sales. Yes. That's the interesting so, part. Yeah, so the overseas company now will make profit from it. Okay. What I think is that in that case, uh, each of these product, uh, each of these overseas company or country would be uh, focusing on one product, mm -hmm. and this product division would be focus, uh, would be giving instructions to this overseas company in that right. for that product only. Right. Right. So the 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 concern, the, the concern of product division manager are more more limited. The only concern about matter that are directly within their lines of business. For others, they're not. Because it's, they're, they're selling their stuff overseas. Okay, so on the organizational chart, the overseas sales activities fall on the, the, the shoulder of this. So. This is actually a reflection of the old Japanese model. It's not really old because quite a number of Japanese multinationals still under this mentality. Okay, so we call it export-oriented internationalization. So I develop this product and produce this product in Japan. And there appear to be demand for my output outside of this. So let me establish a trading company and find a local sales team who can sell the stuff. Right? That's how it works at the very beginning. So in the beginning, it's all about Japan. And then we try to, uh, to basically export our output. So we establish this trading company who is supposed to handle like, our sales agent in different places. Okay. Now, as our overseas business grows stronger, the situation becomes more complicated. That's why before like major organizational restructuring, you end up with this situation, which appears to be you know, a little bit with unnecessarily complicated. So this is reflection of the historical origin. Any further reflection? Any further comments? Right, but this structure is not that good. Remember that it is it was under this structure that Matsushita overtook Philips and become the number one in consumer business. Right, so there must be something in it. So what are the strengths associated with this old structure? Yes, please. Well, each product has its own singular like uh, division, and that's the. Right. I feel like that's the biggest difference from okay. the um, the Philips structure. Uh, they they're not they're not duplicative, and they only have uh, like each product division gets to focus on its own right. uh, production and own right. and all that sort of stuff. Unlike okay. um, Philips, which right. I I had originally thought that it's not necessarily not the the best that mm -hmm. allowed them to overcome Philips's kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, process, but rather Philips's kind of unnecessarily convoluted structure that okay. caused them to fall behind. Okay. Uh, so maybe they're just better because Philips's was that bad. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. So, uh, initially, they uh, created national organizations in each of these countries here, uh, and this basically gave the NO or national organization more power mm -hmm. compared to the product division team. Okay. So this is one difference from Matsushita. Right. And uh, after that, on, even when they tried to restructure it, mm -hmm. still the NO had more power compared to the product division. Okay. Um, and then later on, they tried to narrow um, narrow down 
all the products to four product divisions okay. and then uh, bow, then the repurchase all the anodes and make it centralized from other from end right. of end right, right. So the usual thing here is that much of CETA starts from being a centralized organization. Where Philips started as a relatively decentralized organization. And they try to move toward each other. Okay, that's what the case of the overall impression. Okay. Now, in line with this, the interesting you will also notice that the prior divisions are very powerful under this old structure. Right? In fact, the case gives you the impression that even though Sky is the global headquarter and the CEO of the whole company is not really like trying to direct this head of product division around. They are very independent with a lot of resources directly under their disposal. And they basically control the overseas operation to a greater extent, going all the way from product development, manufacturing, and even marketing and sales. Right? They are very dominant. Okay, which has its benefits, also cost. Okay, so we clear enough about what, what this structure was. So let's say the, 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 this is the center of the power, right? Which is located in Japan. Despite their the overseeing over the, uh, 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 international operation. Yes. So I did have a question, and it might be with the integration, I'm not sure. Um, their production was in Japan, or did they uh, contract the overseas companies to produce uh, the product up? They also, they, of course, they, they do international okay. production at a later stage. Initially, it was just Japan. It was just Japan. Yeah. In the beginning. But, oh, uh, uh, but uh, this, pro but during the later stage of this old structure, in fact, the, an, another interesting thing is they, about the speed of changes, okay? So they change it very slowly, that's the thing. So even under this structure, even after they began with overseas production, these overseas production facility are still under the direct control of product division managers. Okay, so you may have uh, production plans about TV set in Europe that will be controlled by the TV product division in Japan. Okay, so obviously they're not very, uh, at least not completely satisfied with this organizational structure. So what's the main motivation for change? What kind of, what is the most critical problem they try to address associated with this whole structure? Yes, please. So, so I think maybe uh, the resource R&D being decentralized and they wanted to be more close to the other uh, local uh, customers and then mm -hmm. respond to their demands and okay. maybe try and have R&D specific to the specific overseas companies okay. so to, to have a very good response to local okay. demand. So okay. that would help in better product design that would suit the local customer needs to other uh, countries. Okay, so you're saying that if you are in charge of research, you are in charge of the development of more basic kind of research, you are actually out of touch with which end customer. You don't really know what is going on. No, more we can be in touch, but it will be uh, a very tough task to have a very fast response to right. local uh, demands and local needs. Right. And the response time would be much larger. Would be right. predictable just for a company like this. Right. And there are other competitors who might catch up, so. Okay. Okay, so I the communication know. between here and there appear to be problematic. Okay, so in a way, under this new structure, under this old structure, people who are in charge of global sales overseas are not empowered to provide timely information to people who are developing their products. Think about, for example, Oriki. So this is located in Japan, and almost like all the product development engineers or scientists are Japanese graduating from local university. I mean, it's hard to imagine that they can talk to somebody who can only speak Italian <laughs> about what Italian customer would like under this structure, right? So that's that's the problem. In fact, they probably would not expect any opinion from Italians anyway. Okay, yes? What, what are the, what's the major problem? Okay. Well, I, yeah. uh, I, I <laughs> right. Uh, the major problem. 
I think uh, <laughs> well, I did not intend to say anything. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. So what do you want to say? What do I want to say? Yeah. Um, well, I, I can restate what you just mentioned. Yeah, there's, there's a lack of, um, yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's okay. a lack of, uh, like, uh, international communication, and they, they can't re re react to kind of international demand. Right. Uh, so unlike with Philips, where they're kind of national organizations who are located right there into the country where they are marketing themselves. Right. They're able to um, put their, uh, I mean, they're, they're like very well connected with that sort of customer base. I'm guessing that Mark Tell was not. And so when they're, when they're trying to expand uh, internationally and compete with those along these multiple, mm -hmm. uh, in these multiple markets, they, they, need to, they decided that they wanted to do that. Okay. Uh, or they didn't have the information uh, to allow them to adapt their product to the market. Okay. Now, in fact, under this old structure, bringing together the local expertise and the centralized R&D resources for, uh, is the responsibility of product division managers. If they can do their job, it's okay. If they don't, then the, the communication will break down. Yes, please. I was going to say, even though it looks like a relatively simple structure, it mm -hmm. just seems like there's way too many lines going on. Okay. Dotted lines, straight lines, this line, that, like, it, it, uh, I guess it promotes a lot of collaboration. But okay. Like one part of that, for example, like you mentioned, product division, if something breaks down there, then mm -hmm. everything will probably stay. Right. Right. right, right. Okay. So this is the central coordinator, basically, and where the, 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 the center where power resides. <coughs> so if this unit <coughs> ceases to function, the entire system will break down. Okay. Most of the influence actually comes directly or indirectly to this product division. Yes, please. Yeah, so, what if we get innovation or any new technology can come up in any other part of the world other than Japan? Okay. So if a technology is in, in its nascent stage, right. then there is no way for the central research lab in Tokyo right. to work on that technology and integrate it in the product. Right. So that is why it, was very, it is very important uh, to have a decentralized research lab right. with the product in it. So that you can get input from all of the countries where the research right. are actually happening. Right. And very, uh, in a very fast way, you can integrate it into your product. Okay. So for that, you need to enhance the local functions, right? Mm -hmm. The overseas company mm -hmm. cannot be limited to like, organizing Christmas party. Yeah. They must be charged with the task of identifying not just new product idea, but new potential technology that can have dramatic impact on the future. Okay, under this new structure, it's not going to work, right? You're not, in fact, even in the long run, because with this structure, the, uh, your, your foreign employees in overseas location are not empowered. They're not going to develop this capability. So you have to s somehow increase, so, so shift, uh, offer this overseas company more resources, support, and over uh, this like decision making power, right? For the sake of encouraging their local initiatives. Right, and that's why they want to change. Under this structure, people here are way too weak. Right, we have to empower them. Okay. Okay. So, how to go about it? What did they do? Okay. So under the old structure. Oh, most of the resources are concentrated in product division here in Tokyo. Okay? This is considered not satisfactory because you are not leveraging the local expertise of local people. Okay? So you want to make sure that they can do more. And under this new structure, these people do not have that opportunity. Right? So give them the opportunity. These new opportunities will require a new structure. So what did they do? Yes, please. Uh, they hired a bunch, well, not a bunch, but they increased the hiring of foreign uh, people and put them in positions in the company. Okay, in, in they have to probably have to put the system here in, 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 in Tokyo. Anything else? I can, I think you can recall from your reading of the case, what are the key changes made? over a prolonged period of time.
Program development can also be shifted to uh, overseas countries. Mm -hmm. If you have uh, like uh, technology developed in one country, okay. you can replicate the same technology in other countries and develop the product. Okay. So product development. If you have product development in each of these countries, then you mm -hmm. have uh, you can reduce the operational cost. Okay. Okay. So ideally, you want to enhance this line, right? Get this overseas subsidiary to be more involved in the product development. And because people who are working on fundamental or more basic research are also involved here, so if you can increase their involvement, you're sort of establishing a stronger connection uh, from the beginning to the end, uh, between the beginning and the end. You did try to establish the regional headquarters to mm -hmm. provide more operational transfer or more responsive transfer okay. across the regions. Okay, so in a way, similar to what we, we saw in the case of France, uh, they establish a European headquarter and then try to increase the prestige, increase the area of responsibility. Yes, please. <coughs> With local subsidiaries, in which ways are they equipped? Okay. okay, so it's not like you just take what is given to you from Japan, so whether you can have more initiative in picking up difficult to recall for you because it's oh sorry it takes a lot of time now so for them to uh, so so the interesting is that for them to initiate organizational changes how many people are involved at least three major CEO are involved I mean there are more but if you look at what they have done right they so this CEO he brought all subsidiary under this trading company and then merged the this trading company into the parent company so one question we have is why do you need like almost like two headquarters? So what he did is put everything under this and then merge it. Okay? So he, he was there for seven years and then another CEO who also took a seven year term. So he began to pushing for more offshore manufacturing instead of producing everything in Japan. And then he put for the, he also pushed for more R and D a partnership and the position. So partnership with the outside world. Okay, not just with the with Sony, he also tried to bring them a position to bring in external resources, stuff like that. Typical DBIC, but in-house. Okay, so for so basically not not just production in Japan, but production in other places. But then when it comes to overseas production, uh, this began this still fall under the responsibility of China Division. Okay, and then for this guy, so he separated plants from product divisions. Okay, who had the source? who had to source from non-exclusive manufacturing centers. So what does that mean? So for the, in the, so uh, up until this stage, they began with overseas production, but overseas production of different, were under the product division. But then they strip that connection between the overseas production and BD and establish the centralized units called manufacturing centers and put this all, all the overseas production facility as well as the Japanese local production facility under this centralized unit. Okay? Then marketing and sales were stripped from product divisions. Okay? And absorbed into two global marketing organizations. So they established two marketing organizations, a central marketing organization, and put the sales and marketing activity under them. Uh, as a result, they weaken the product division's control over marketing and sales. So what he has been doing here is like reducing the power of product division. So they lose the control over overseas production. At this stage, they lose the control over marketing and sales. Okay. Now let's look at how much time it took for them to accomplish all this. Seven plus seven times fourteen is another six years. It took them twenty years. So if you complain about Sony for being too bad, you can come up and complain <laughs> about the Chicago for doing the same thing. Okay, so based on that, what we have is, so we can redraw the organizational chart. TLA established a non-exclusive manufacturing center or global manufacturing center. TLA established two global market organizations, so these are reflected. Right. These are under the direct control of Japanese headquarters, right? And 
there is no longer a trading company, so the trading company is merged to the headquarters, go headquarters or whatever, right? In the old days, the product division had direct control over manufacturing, marketing, and sales globally, okay? Now, this connection were substantially weakened. And the links were moved to the newly established centralized link. Okay, so this is how the new organization structure looks like. Okay, and at the same time, they also do go for offshore manufacturing, so they have international production. And uh, the research product development tend to be a strictly in-house activity. But through partnership as a position, they pretty much like opening up these two stages. Okay, so the new organizational structure looks like this. What do you think? Does this address the problem that they identify in the very beginning? Like encouraging the initiative? not very clear how you can empower guys here under this new structure. Yes? Yeah, but we want to say the same as China. Or as a company that we we for this group. Okay. Of course the uh, uh, group was much broader. Uh, mm -hmm. like if you compare it to the other one because the other one uh, they they do not have very uh, strong control. Now the control of this group is very small so that's how it is but at least they, they have a indirect control in manufacturing and marketing for sales. Any further interpretation on that, do you How would you like to do this? Does this make sense to you? If you the problem for you is that under the old structure, it's too centralized globally. So that local people over very limited with over with very limited opportunity to contribute to your global operation. Which have to be changed, so we change the organization structure and this is what you end up with. Which does not seem like solving the problem. Right? You still have a centralized organization. At the end of the day, these two new units are, are, centri are centralized units. So what, 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 what's the implication for implementing this? What, why do you want to do this? What's the rationale? What, what do we get by changing from this structure to the new one? So the major communication breakdown when it comes to manufacturing is actually between different lines of business, right? So the, P, the, the, product, the TV business manager will be responsible for TV production for real TV, okay? And for the global headquarters have access to that activity, that particular line of business have to go through the product division function, okay? The problem is about, for example, what about the TV production and the, I don't know, air condition and production, right? They are all under different line of business, but they can be synergy over there. Under the old structure, communication will be limited, right? But under the new structure, you basically consolidate the manufacturing across a different line of business. So in the old structure, the manufacturing is centralized globally, but fragmented in terms of lines of business. By doing this, you integrate across different lines
lines of business. So you create centralization in a uh, centralization not only in terms of geography, not only in terms of geography, but also in terms of business goals. So you understand what I'm saying? So different in, in the old model, different business division un manage central, uh, uh, man manage global production, but only within the boundary of their line of business. Okay, here this is still a centralized production, but now that you are able to cut across the different lines. So it's actually one step further towards centralization. I guess you could say the same thing about global marketing. So yes. It also leverages a more global perspective right. instead of uh, just buy a product. Right. And what I've observed is you, they were successful at least in weakening the product divisions mm -hmm. because now the manufacturing and the marketing sales won't have solid line reporting to right. them, but rather to a global uh, manufacturing center and market. Right. Right. One clear implication is that this you should be the center of power. But now the product managers, the product man product manager, vice president, or president, so on and so forth, will triple their power. Any further comments? Yes. Um, I'm pretty sure there are manufacturing centers, uh, they, they actually like uh, or maybe script or fold off some of their like, underperforming things. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think to this the extent that Philips did it, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I know that they also kind of, um, uh, in order to make these manufacturing centers functional, they kind of found things with synergies with other systems. Right, well. right, right, right. They have to start with a very decentralized kind of operation. So their problem is like the other way around. Not only they have to consolidate across line of business, they also have to consolidate across geography. So here, Japan start with the centralized model I mean, in terms of geography. So the only thing they have to concern about is to create to enhance coordination and reduce waste or redundancy across their lines of business. Okay, so by the, 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 the thing that we have done is that with this kind of organizational structure, first you weaken uh, substantially the product division management function in exchange for better coordination across the product, uh, across different product lines. Okay, but at the end, you stick with the centralized model in terms of geography. So if this is what you do, you can imagine these guys are not going to Okay, so that's the situation of Matsushita. So keep that in mind, and then let us look at the case of Philips. Right, so this is the case of Philips. Now, in fact, they have pretty much the same organizational unit, Starwis, that they have a global headquarter, okay? And there is an international concern council, right, which pretty much like similar to the, the trading council. And they have research lab, they have product division, and they have national offices. So basically, pretty much similar to the overseas overseas company in the case of Matsushita. Well, the connections, the actors, or participants are the same, but the connections are very different, right? So, so what 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 kind of how how, how do we describe this structure based on the information provided in the paper? They control the marketing, sales, manufacturing, product development within <coughs> their geographic boundary, and they are highly independent. Okay, so the, in fact, the, they were like they the international concern council, but this was like attended by the head of different national offices. Okay, so this is not really like a hierarchy, but rather a, a horizontal domination uh, committee. In the case of Philips, yes, please. 
Right, right. So in contrast, in sharp contrast actually, in the case of Matsushita, Prada division is the most powerful place. For us, in the case of Philips, right, the resources are concentrated in national offices when it comes to marketing, sales, manufacturing, and product development, the later stage of product development, or research lab, which is a centralized place. Okay? Now they pretty much have a like hollow in the middle. What, what else? Yes, please. Not, I mean, not only are they hollow, but you can see that they're, they're I guess, things that they will see for development and manufacturing and marketing and sales and all that, but all of it is just duplicative. Mm -hmm. uh, and taken over by the national offices. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So basically, you can picture what they are doing in the old days. You have a centralized lab who have a lot of resources, a high degree of independence, focusing on like interesting ideas. Okay? And then you have so many of these national offices who have full authority regarding to the matters that fall within their territory. Okay? And you have product division who are supposed to coordinate matters uh, within a particular product boundaries but the function is very weak, okay? So basically you are strong uh, at the end, uh, 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 on upstream and downstream, but the, the coordinator in between is kind of weak, okay? And this is actually a reflection of the company history, right? The case told you that Philip was founded by two brothers. One was responsible for the product development, the other was responsible for sales, and there's a clear division of labor between them. So the, the one brother was like, I want to develop the most interesting kind of technology and products. Of course, I got all the resources as a result of the function. And then there's another very competent sales who are doing sales here and there. He got all the resources. So that's how they work. This, this organizational structure is the reflection of the, of the, 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 the relationship between these two brothers back in the old days. Okay? So what's the problem with this? What kind of problem they try to address? Now, one thing that is mentioned in the case is this. They have been unable to or delay in bringing technology innovation to the market. That means that you have interesting idea over there. We have very strong sales and marketing team over there in, the, in, in different country markets. But somehow there is a breakdown, right? Uh, there, there is a communication or a coordination breakdown from here to there. Why did that happen under this structure? Yes, please. I don't know, but maybe uh, at the development <coughs> stage, you can see the research lab and national offices are, are of course some power. Okay. I don't know to which extent that they have uh, a lot of power, and maybe if they are not uh, right. coordinated enough, uh, it could be it can be sometimes to uh, to adapt the research uh, the research strategy and uh, the, the local market expectation. Uh, right. 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 Although it appears on this figure that this guy are actually communicating, but you have to remember from the perspective of the, the centralized research lab, they are like probably like complaints from 40 different kind of national offices about how you should do, what you should do, and they're driving you to a different direction. Now, when you have that, chances are just ignore, right? And just do things my way. Okay, so this, in a way, this does not work. Okay, so in, uh, in response to that, what do you have to do uh, to, to address the problem? And there are other problems. For example, the operation is very costly, right? So when you have like a full fledged uh, full like full set of function in all the all the all the national subsidiary, all the national offices. Are you producing every, basically, for example, they're producing every single European country, right? So it does not make a lot of sense to have to find a way to consolidate the operations. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, and take away the cost of the national offices and put it into the public division. Okay. Okay. So it's the opposite of Matsushita. 
So in the case of Marshall C tau, this part is too strong, and this part is too weak. So they are supposed to empower this unit where uh, they have to reduce the power of this. Okay? Now in the case of Masushita, they did weaken the product division function, but they, 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 they did not put the power in the hands of HS or Z or whatever. But anyway. Okay, but in this case, you have to do the opposite. These guys are too strong. You have to take away some of their power and resources and move them here. Okay, so they have to change. And these were, and they made a change under one CEO in just three years. Okay, in case of Japan, it takes them three CEO and 20 years. I just, just give you some indicator about what Japanese companies are so slow in general. Okay, so what did he do? He actually do, did, he actually did quite a number of things. The first thing that he did is to consolidate product division. By reducing the number of product division, there were four teams. Okay, so he reduced the number to only four. Okay. The second thing is that he replaced ICC with group management committee. So where is ICC? Sorry, this is ICC. Okay. And treat the management board at headquarters and move and displace the board member to the committee. Okay, so the, the management board in HQ used to be larger. Okay, they reduced the size, so we have to relocate and reappoint some of them. And what do you do? You put them in the reorganized, whatever you call it, group management committee. Okay? And then he relocated his headquarters staff to product divisions, okay? And he passed product management to national offices, okay? And made RG, RG budget the responsibility of PDs. So product division now control budget. We know that whoever control the budget who got power. So this is one way to empower them. And close 75 of the four, the 400, I can't name it, but way too many places. Okay, so we can redraw the figure like this, or the changes some figure, right? So the connection has been changed, the management board in HK has been reduced, okay? And far from this, the former board member are moved here, right? And they move former HQ staff to the product divisions, which are reducing number from 14 to four, okay? And product divisions now control R&D budget, which gives them power over the research lab, okay? And they dispatch product managers to take position in different national offices. Okay, now, what, what do we see here? What's the, the rationale behind this move? Yes, uh, sir. National offices are still poor at all. Oh, sorry? National offices, no, they, are, they don't have power. That's all. Uh, can you elaborate more? That, that, that's the, kind of the same uh, of the, uh, the other company. Mm -hmm. Now uh, they, control, they, they don't control uh, marketing, they don't control manufacturing, they don't control technology development. Right, right. So uh, it, it seems to be uh, more difficult to react to the market uh, right. changes uh, and to adapt to to adapt to quickly to the to the demand. Okay. So one thing that happened is that their control over this activity have been weaker, and not only that, they're dispatching people from other division to your territory yeah. and take control of many of these activities. Okay. Uh, in the previous structure, the product divisions didn't have any control over the research. Mm -hmm. uh, but now they have, they have the budget, so they can directly control the service of these product divisions. Right, right. So um, it will be easier for them to quickly integrate the technologies into the products. Okay. So you can see what happened is that not only they now control the national offices, and as well as the responsibility to each individual country. They now all have major say to the research development. So for the research new research project to be implemented, they need to get approval of these product managers, which means that they have to communicate information to them, right? And these national offices, because the formal product managers are thin now, right? So the information flow from here to there is also being improved. So basically what you're doing is to empower product division, okay, uh, product management function, and make this product division a key integrator from upstream to downstream, right? Formally, your problem is the communication breakdown uh, from the beginning to the end, okay? Now you empower this party to become responsible for that kind of, 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 of integration, right? If they do their job, integration will, be, uh, uh, will become a lot more 
hot else. Yes, it would look very similar to what's start before. Right. So with the power division, seems to have consolidated or mm -hmm. centralized a lot of the power right. to that, to the power division. Okay. Okay. So it probably ends up with the similar problem in that we saw in Matsushita old structure. Basically, to a, but here to a different extent. Actually, there are two differences. Yes. But Matsushita didn't have direct linkage between product division and research lab. Mm -hmm. So this this will this makes more logical sense mm -hmm. uh, because in each of the different each of the different markets, it will be easier for them to uh, come up with the new technology and integrate into the product. Mm -hmm. And Matsushita will only be able to. Uh, it, will, it was like a top-down approach. Right, now, right. here it's bottom down, bottom up approach okay. for the research. Okay. Okay. Right. So the, 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 the one key difference in line with what you have just said is that in the case of Matsushita, uh, so, okay, sorry. In the case here, once they control the national offices, they will have a better understanding of what about local demands, yeah. right? Which enable them to do a better job when it comes to uh, to to, the, to, to directing the research activity. If you do not have this linkage you will be in trouble, okay? So your ability to perform the activity here will depend on your ability to, uh, to, to, to establish the, to operate the linkage here. But without this, then you are, I mean, you're just directing them to the wrong direction. It's not gonna help. So you need to, to come up with this. Yes, please. I think uh, product, product division is in the middle and it coordinates everything, but mm -hmm. from national offices, Right. There is no direct link from okay. national offices to global or to product division. Just get uh, direction from this uh, committee and division, mm -hmm. and it's difficult to get a good uh, insights from national offices. Okay. Division. Okay. Right. 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 Okay. In in this sense, so okay. So on the formal organizational chart, you have to go through like manage global, manage community, and then manage queue, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're, they're actually relying on interpersonal connection. Mm -hmm. Okay, the fact that a number of the former product managers are holding the key position in national offices create informal relationship that can cut across the formal organizational structure. Without that, that they're going to have the problem that you just described. Okay, so that's another reason. It's not just like seizing power, but the formal connection, the, the connection between um, people here and there would, would be become important, would be important in the com communication channel, right? This is related to what we talked about in the very first week, right? When we change the organizational structure from this and that, we relocate people, okay? But because they used to work together in the past, to the extent that they, they didn't like, don't like hate each other a lot, right? So we establish like in the informal channel. So if you change the structure, formal organizational structure uh, to a minor extent on a regular basis, you can actually enrich the, 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 your, 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 your yeah, like interpersonal connection with informal channels. <coughs> okay. In fact, there are technology for us to analyze the, the, the structure of, 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 of informal channels. Use some, something we call name generator uh, scheme. So ask you to nominate who are important for doing what job. Okay, and then based on that information, we can construct the interpersonal connection, a map of interpersonal connection. And from there, we can identify, for example, the critical bridges. Like human, like not human organization are like this. We have, we tend to be hanging around with people who are most like us. Right? And that will result in like quite a number of local cluster here and there. Right? You have like three bodies and they have I mean, they're close friends and here and there and the interaction between different groups tend to be limited. Okay? But very so often there were people who just are like more like outward oriented, okay, who create connections across these social groups. So without these kinds of bridging ties, the overall social structure will be fragmented. Okay? These are three good friends, and you have like four good friends over there, right? And then five good friends over here, right? So 
other day, probably that happened probably because you are more similar to each other, share similar interests, but probably because of the formal foundation assignment. These are accountants and marketing guys and R and D's engineers only. Can only talk to engineers, something like that. Okay? But if this is the only thing that we have, the whole of that structure will break down. Okay? But luckily there are sometimes sometimes people do develop connection across these local clicks. So these are the crucial linkages. So one, one thing that we try to identify through formal analysis is the existence of redundant type. Okay, say if these two groups are only connected by one single ties. Now suppose we lose this person or that person, we're in trouble, right? So the legal redundancy creates a need for us to develop redundant ties, so probably have to rotate these two people. Okay, so that, that's why we do this kind of thing. Okay, but that's another subject. And it also gives you an idea about who is more influential. Like for example, in this group, probably these two guys are more influential than that guy. That's what you desire sometimes to do, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Like if you don't want this guy to be powerful, then probably you have to do something. Like making this guy connected to this guy is which is gonna give us this is gonna give us. Okay. Now let's let's focus on let's look at a number of a, 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 an additional issue. What's the implication of reducing the number of product division from fourteen to four? Yes, please. Are we do put in charge of the division? Because mm -hmm. I think there were fourteen managers before. Right. And we only have four four remaining. So right. Which uh, I think the, the, the power is shifting inside the, the division. Okay. So like we, we, we need someone that is able to control like everything. So right, right. I mean the, the best the best people to, to do that and and no tension inside the, the division in right. order to be able to, to work. Uh, okay, well. okay. So the problem they have previously was that the product manager were too weak, right? And now you try to empower them. It's kind of difficult for you to empower like fourteen different managers. Mm -hmm. It will be easier if you consolidate the resources under more limited number of people and try to promote their legitimacy within the organization. Okay, so that's the internal consideration of doing this. Okay, you now control like uh, the four old line of businesses. Okay, which make you powerful, more powerful immediately. Yes, please. Uh, it must be easier to cooperate Actually related to what what they have done here, Matsushita have done here, right? The reason they want to create this is because of the barrier between different product divisions, right? So they choose to consolidate them under the direct directly under the global headquarters. But you can do this the, the other way around. Just reduce the number of product division. If you believe the coordination between these two old product divisions are important, just put them under the same same line of command. Okay? So this is alternative way to achieve coordination across the different lines of business. Uh, yes, please. I guess there was also financial reason for that mm -hmm. because uh, they were trying to cut uh, leaders' headcount. Right. They're trying to uh, close plants and divest right. some of their businesses. So right. It right. makes sense for them to uh, go from fourteen to four five. Right. Right. Exactly. They also simplify their business portfolio. So some of the business are supposed to be even closed. So in that context, the, the, product divi the number of product division will nature be reduced as well. Any further comments? Okay, now one interesting thing is this. Okay, so Matsushita took 20 years move from one organization structure to the other. Whereas in the case of Philips, it took them just three years to make these major changes. And we learned from Sony that shifting too quickly can create problems. But Philips did not seem to experience the problem that we saw in Sony. What is that Sony? Are there reasons for us to believe that Philips are, are better able to address 
the problem encounter in solving that is do you think that the people in this structure are more ready for a new structure like this? If not, then you don't have people, like the, the product division is now more powerful, so you need competent product manager. Do you have that with your old structure? Yes. Uh, they, they, so they, they uh, not to start there, but they have people who are in the house and in our I'm sorry, in, um, what was the first one? Sony didn't have people working okay. around really, but in this one they did. I think they said that the product division heads kind of would go through the national office Mm -hmm. Even if they didn't have very much power at the time, they were right. familiar with the organization. Right, right. Uh, and so, uh, I guess naturally, then they would be more comfortable um, when they were given the power over certain aspects of the, the right. national offices had. Uh, so, yes, I think they would. Okay. Okay. So, yes, in their old structure, the product manager, despite their lack of formal power, are involved in a number of like national matter as well as product division matter. So at least they know what the situation is like. Okay, which is different from the case of, of, of Sony, where the, the like this country manager like focus very almost exclusively on their, their 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 territory. So if you ask them to take care of anything outside, it's like nah, they, they simply do not have the, that the information and experience. So in, the, in this in the case of Philips, wasn't it socialized over like a longer period of time? Mm -hmm. versus Sony, because I know you said it's, it's just three years for this actual thing, but I'm right, like, right. it seems like the previous three CEOs as well had already tried to shift the power of the national offices to product divisions in terms of removing the manufacturing capabilities mm -hmm. and everything. So did that facilitate that transition versus... Right, right, right. So yes, so if you look at the, their history, so if, even before they learned the formal organizational changes, the previous CEO are doing some preparation work. So it's not like you just have this happen all of a sudden. Now, for example, if this is what you have in mind in the long, in, 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 in the distant future, you have to get the people here to be involved in different in, 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 in research as well as development <coughs> activities. Uh, no before that. Yes. I guess could it also be partly cultural related? historically has been through a lot of changes and right. has been always a, been very centralized. Mm -hmm. So the, um, people are used to being moved around and okay. being ch and adapting to different changes. Okay. And so maybe they're culturally more ready to accept this kind of drastic okay. restructuring. Okay. Right. The, the case does not give us like, much information about their culture, but let's see that your openness to changes. Yes. Uh, yeah, involved in Philips, uh, mm -hmm. but then it's the things are ending for four years. So I can tell you what is the current structure of Philips. Right. So headquarters is there, but instead the four product divisions, they now call it as verticals. So I'm okay. product division, they call it as vertical, and in each vertical, they, they will have related set of businesses. Okay. Each vertical will be divided into different business units. For example, in Philips, we have three verticals, lighting, consumer lifestyle, and healthcare. I work okay. in healthcare, okay. MRI business unit, r &D. Okay. So the structure is more or less same, but it's now more streamlined. Okay. And lighting business is uh, like, uh, the ownership of the lighting business is different from the rest of the two, okay. uh, consumer lifestyle and uh, uh, healthcare. But it works. Uh, the headquarters is same, endowment, middleman. Okay. So that's one point I wanted to make. Okay. Okay. Now, if we look across these two cases, as well as the one of Sony, what you will notice is that they seem to create the impression that so they have at least by this stage they have four different product divisions or verticals at a later stage, three vertical at a later stage. The similar or even a for this, the identical organizational structure and principle are applied across the different product division. Okay, but in the next two cases, which we're going to read, we're going to investigate, we're going to look into the next two cases. You'll realize that they apply different organizational structure 
to different pala division because of different nature of different line of the people. Okay, so this is actually an important breakthrough in the history of you know, organizational theory and so on and so forth. Beforehand, we have this idea of one company, one pala, right? So since we belong to the same company, for the sake of simplicity and consistency and so on and so forth, we try to impose an idea of organizational structure across the board at a certain period of time. Okay, so the, the, the thought and situation evolved, we began to realize that it does not have to be so, right? because different lines of business differ in their nature. So the optimal organizational structure for them will actually be different. So they try to implement different organizational structure for different lines of business. Okay, but that's not the end of the story, because if we have this differentiated organizational structure for different lines of business, it becomes more difficult for you to create synergy across the lines of business, right? If they are similar, it's easier to coordinate. If they are different animals, it's more difficult for you to bring them on the same board. So you have to figure out the integration mechanism. Um, that will be required for that. Okay, so those are the issues that we will be dealing with next week. Okay. Any further reflection? Okay, um, I have to bring two things. The first is, let me see who is. I got this updated class roster from the office. Um, I have to ensure this is consistent with the records that you try out. Okay? Uh, Chris Liang. His name is not here, but his name is here. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> his name will disappear. <laughs> Benjamin. Benjamin. Uh, Uh, for those people who are not here today, do you know them and know whether they will stay? Like Chris, anybody know Chris? Chris Liang? Uh, is he in this course? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay, but his name is here, but I don't see my yeah, What about Sophia? No, no, no. Is there any indication if there are what uh, WPS students or a foreign uh,
some little bit of complexity because uh, for those people which we know will be here, there are a total of 19 of them. And if we divide this 19 of you into six groups, which means that one group will have four members, right? Uh, but only one. So uh, if you, I, I mean, you, the, the difficulty is that maybe two groups would like to take four and then we end up with some complexity, okay? So let's shoot for three for now and let's see who will <laughs> or do you have like a situation where you would like to have four now? Have you like tried to organize yourself into groups? No, you're not here yet. No. Okay, now why, why don't we do this? Because we still have some time. Maybe you can stay here for a little bit of time and talk to each other and try to organize yourself into a group of three. Okay, and next week I think the class registration will be finalized next week. So next week we'll also finalize the group formation. So stay a little bit longer, uh, uh, for a little while, then try to figure out how to do it.